Let's see which one do I usually do? It's like that, yeah. To do it like this. All right. Hey, welcome back, everybody. So the try build continues. Let's see if we can't get a crankshaft installed on the second of three starting engines. So you all are familiar with what we've done up to this point. We've got the block bearing bore repaired. We line board that. This is going to be the acid test to see if everything lines in and you know clearances are right and we can get the crankshaft set in and the rear cover on and the thing still spins right <laughs> so i i am optimistic so all right and we left off last time with me trying to learn how to turn aluminum and i think i i got it down well enough to complete the bearing the finishes are i would say to my liking so all we did was pattern it off of the factory original 20 under bearing that I have right here. And well, which reminds me, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. So here's our next freshly ground crankshaft right here. Mains and rods, both 20 thousandths undersized. So the bearings are gonna have a home on that. So yeah, I just analyzed and measured this one and basically replicated it as close as I could in every way except for the outside dimension because this one has to be slightly oversized to take into account the material that we pulled out of that damaged main bearing bore. So these are only about a one one thousandths press fit to begin with. So I built about one and a half thousandths press into this just for a little little added measure. A few more specifications of this. Yeah, we have the um, oil supply holes have been drilled in. Same spacing, offset, setback, diameter, what have you as the factory original. And when you drill these, they're not like a straight down in drilling. They actually come in kind of at an angle like that from kind of from the side a little bit. Both of them are the same way. So yeah, basically when you drill it, just stand it right up, drill straight down so you're not having to uh, negotiate kind of a, a side slope or anything. And see the factory original also has this relief that goes between the oil holes there and there. I was able to pull that off with a key seat cutter, inch and five sixteenths in diameter, quarter inch wide. That was the perfect arc to get in there and bridge the, uh, the space between those two feed holes. So the only thing we have not done is broach this other straight slot for, uh, for oil supply here that's in the factory one. So I decided being that this is aluminum and it is not as resilient as steel, I didn't really feel good about vicing it up into anything and then ramming a broach down there and then maybe, you know, tweaking it out a little bit I don't it's it's just not well enough supported in my mind yet I'm not brave enough with it I don't really know what all it can withstand so my brain tells me the best support that's ever going to have is going to be in the block so what we're going to do is press the bearing into the block before we broach that other um, oil groove and then I'll even go through the revised um, retaining dowel that I'm planning on uh, fabbing up for this we'll get it all well secured with that and then we're going to slam that eighth inch wide uh, keyway brooch right down there and finish off that last supply groove so yeah i've got a broaching set over here and you know these are the bushings for the brooches are pretty well sized to whatever capacity the keyway uh, you know that size key could sustain so needless to say my bushings don't go out to well full diameter for these bearings so I ended up making my own bushing for it and it turned out rather well we had a, a good time on the uh, on the members feed behind the scenes getting this all uh, fit and slotted in the milling machine and but at uh, yeah that, that broaching bar goes right down there just nice so that was kind of a fun kind of behind the scenes deal just kind of shows what goes into the making of these episodes that usually never makes it onto the public feed. For every episode that I, you know, throw on in the series here, it's typically about three days lead up time just getting, I call it duck rowing. I'm getting all my ducks in a row and everything, getting all the preparations done. And a lot of it lately has been making the tools to do the job because I'm finally getting around to all these different types of oddball repairs that I've been thinking about for years but I've never taken time to do. So if y'all are interested in additional behind the scenes content like that, there's always a link down below in the description. Click on that, see if it's something you wanna get into. If not, that's cool too. On with the build. And the final thing I should mention here is crankshaft in play. So y'all are familiar with how we set that up from the last build. It just, uh, it's all contained in how deep you make the bearings. So I was able to employ once again, my 
crankshaft in play tool gear. I just took a little bit out of the inside of that. You all saw, and we bolt that on there, and we can uh, we can decide how thick we want to make our bearing. I got a nice ten thousandths in play on this. We're kind of right down towards the tighter end of the spec. So, oh, and one other thing, uh, question in the comment section asked if uh, it was it had to do with right there and there those alignment marks, those two C's. They're kind of in line with the two uh, the key slots in there. And someone asked if it was even possible to put this on 180 off because the image looked like maybe the, uh, the the key slots weren't directly in line with one another. They are directly in line. I did go back and verify that. So you can get those uh, marks out of alignment if you're not careful. So now that we've covered all that, we can put a bearing in. All right, same setup as before. I'm going to use hydraulics to pull it in. The only difference this time, I'm putting some sleeve retaining Loctite on the bearing just to back it up a little bit. All right, not gonna lie, that was a little bit stressful. <laughs> I, that, uh, it was really banging with that sleeve retainer on there. That, anyone that's ever pressed aluminum knows that a tight press fit like that where it goes pow, pow, pow as it moves in, that's typically not the aluminum doing that. That was definitely that sleeve retainer. As soon as that stuff hits like a zero oxygen environment, it starts setting up immediately. So the further you have to push something, the tougher and tougher it's gonna be. I was pulling like five tons on the gauge, pressure gauge, just, uh, getting that seated in there, but we're good. We got our oil holes lined up, so that's all right. We're sticking just a little bit proud on each side just to kind of keep on top of, you know, what happened to make sure nothing changed. I took the uh, the bore gauge and did a measurement in there with the mic and honestly pretty happy how it turned out. So with the new bearing specs, my desired was gonna be 1.801 ID after the press. And when I made that, I actually made it about 1.803 all right so we pressed it in it's a straight 1.800 after the press fit so that actually came in three thousandths worth right there and i was playing a little fast and loose to the high end of the spec because you know this is kind of my trial and error first you know run through making a bearing and this is when you really learn how it acts so well when you uh uh, consider the measurement on the crank. I am left with a eight thousandths running clearance after the press fit And I'm pretty happy with that because we'll go starting engine Crankshaft main bearing clearance aluminum five to eight and a half max permissible 15 I'm still happy to be within that original desired spec even though we're on the higher end. So We know kind of a little bit better now how this is going to act when I make more aluminum bearings I'm going to expect a little bit more crush in than what I was the first time I was expecting one to two I didn't think we'd be a full three, so good stuff to know. Still happy with the turnout. Just spent a few minutes at the press. I got a new Cat Factory 20 under rear main put into the cover. There's the part number. Didn't show that because we went through that whole routine with the first short block that we put together. So you all want to go back and refresh your memory, click on that link that just popped up right there. Otherwise, we'll continue. So I have not pinned the dowel into this one yet. Neither have I made the uh, the main and the block permanent either. So we know we have to rework for the dowel there because the opening is all wallowed out. And I got to looking at the rear cover. That dowel hole is a bit worn as well. So I think I'm going to do my rework on both of those bearings. I had another new dowel here on hand I was prepared to use on the rear main, but we're not gonna do that now. So before I make either of these permanent though, I still want to prove out my work. I throw a little bit of assembly lube on the crank, place the crankshaft in there, and I want to bolt the rear cover up, make sure we have a good spin. That's just gonna double verify that when I line board this and made the bearing, everything stayed on center.
And now for the test. Oh yeah, that is smooth. I'm liking that. Let's check end play. Yep, still got our end play there. I think um, I think everything we did turned out right on. That is <laughs> that's quite a relief. We've got a good workable system. So, oh, that's smooth. Perfect. <laughs> All right, we can proceed now. Now to get a bit creative, how are we going to rework the old friction fit dowel? Um, well, let's start by looking at the original design. So we have an eighth inch through hole in the center. That's for letting just that much more oil into the bearing. So we're definitely gonna wanna retain that. And these are right about quarter inch diameter on the shank with just a little bit of a head on top to bottom out. So when we take a look at the hole, that the old dowel went in, that hole has been wallowed out beyond a quarter inch. So another thing we want to look at, I'll get you guys all the way in here so you can see, maybe, hopefully. All right, we've got this flat land that goes just around the top of that dowel hole. That land area is 3 eighths of an inch in diameter across. So that's another important dimension to keep in mind. So after further assessment, I've determined it's going to take a 1764 diameter drill bit to re-round out that old dowel hole. So that kind of leads us down the path that we're on right now automatically. Again, McMaster car, I'm pretty sure at present rate, they're probably going to send me a Christmas card this year. Just saying, I've been plenty good to them. So here's a 1764 extended length short flute drill bit. So we can put this in the drill press or the milling machine, whatever we want to do and have enough distance on the bit to have a nice square approach on that old worn out hole. So we're not fighting a drill chuck with a standard length bit, having to come in at an angle because the chuck's wanting to hit the sidewall of the block. So there's our bit right there. 1764 is also the pilot size for 5 16 by 18 thread pitch tap. You see where I'm going with this? I'm gonna take this out to a 5 16 by 18 thread all the way through the block, all the way through the bearing. And to create the new threaded pin, once again, McMaster Car had this 10 pack of 5 16 by 18 by 7 16 alloy socket head cap screws. So these are not going to fit as they are, but we can make them fit. First thing we have to do is get that eighth inch hole drilled all the way down the center of that.
All right, see the hole through there? See the yellow caterpillar back behind? Yep, one step closer. So the oil hole is all the way through. The next issue we have is the fact that the head is a 7 16 diameter on this, and we need to take it down to less than 3 8 to fit down into that land. So once again, back to the lathe. All right, just trying to decide how I'm going to put this in the chuck. I could do it the same way that I did when I drilled the hole, but I kind of like to have, I want to take that whole head down. I don't want to be right up against the jaws. So time to get a bit creative once again. I think I have an idea. All right, at work I used to pull the centers out of these Allen sockets all the time whenever I needed a hex drive and a pinch. Okay, everybody, here's the finished product. So yeah, that oil hole all the way through. And I turned the head down to a 0.345 inch diameter. That's gonna give me a little bit of wobble room inside that 3 8 pocket land on top of the threaded hole there. So compare that next to the original design. I'm liking the looks of that threaded design much, much better. So we'll discard the original. And now to give the new threaded pin a home. I've got the 1764 extended bit loaded in the drill press. We're gonna take it right on down through the cast and through the aluminum, clean up that hole. Okay, that looks great, but these GoPros are so weird. I've had this kind of happen on like the lathe shots before. There's an image stabilization program inside this thing where anytime it's um, exposed to like a vibration or like any kind of a rough operation, it's trying to account for that and even out the image. I just watched that last clip back on here and you could see it looked like the block was doing this as I was drilling through. I assure you nothing was moving around, but that's because I had the mag mount on the table right here and just enough of the vibration from the machine came through. I think it was just, it was trying to wrap its head around what was going on. It was almost like we were on, on the ocean riding waves, but it's so weird how that happens. A lot of times when tapping, I'll use this little square, this little gauge block to just kind of check to see how straight everything's going. Yeah, it's actually looking pretty good. Okay, I think you all can see that. We've just got the point of the tap starting through the bearing right now so I'm going to withdraw it that's probably as deep as I'm going to thread because well here I'll show you guys when I get it out all right so you can see how the end of the tap tapers down where as it cuts threads the uh, the teeth get deeper and deeper I don't mind leaving a little bit of like a tapered hole threaded hole at the base to be just a slight interference fit with the threads on the pin that are going to go in there so just a little bit more positive gripping action i'm trying to build into the system just having a look threads are looking mighty fine so just like with the bearing got some super duty loctite on the new threaded pin so we'll get that put in
Yeah, that's not going to come loose. I'll guarantee it. Having a look from the outside, there's the head of the new pin. And here's what I'm looking at right now. Yeah, we have good recess up inside that bearing. We're not even down into the, the relief cut for that oil groove there. So not only will the end of that never touch the crankshaft, we should be able to broach that slot in there as well without having to get the uh, the cutting wedge, the cutting bar up into that uh, the steel of that set screw, of that Allen screw. So yeah, we even hit the oil relief right dead center. I'm kind of happy with that. And carried out all the same steps to put an updated threaded pin into the bearing that's in the rear cover. So um, yeah, I'm liking the system. It fits very well in here. The difference with this one though, you can see it's a rather tight fit between those two oil holes. They're definitely closer together in this uh, rear main than they are in the front. But remember, those holes are drilled in at angles like that. So even though it looks a bit tight between them down at the bottom, you are dealing with a thicker wall, more material up toward the top. So that doesn't worry me at all. Final step now, let's broach that oil groove into that front main. And so we're gonna use the custom made broaching bushing for this. And I'll just do a quick run down of how it's gonna work. Now granted, I'm gonna put some assembly lube on all this just so that we're not scarring anything under pressure, but I'm in installing the bushing from the inside of the crankcase like that. Although I plan on broaching from the outside in. So technically we're positioning that bushing backwards of how you would typically do it. When I put this brace in there though, it'll all make sense. Okay, we've got our, our grease in place. So what I'm gonna do is throw this 3 8 bolt down through this, uh, this bottom hole down here where you have access to drive that oil seal out. That captures it, it can't spin on that side. Okay, so we have our angle brace in there. We're braced well against the floor of the case so it can't tip out. And we're hard up against the bushing for running the brooch through. And in this case, I'm using the heavy flange, the heavy shoulder on the back side of that bushing to support the bearing because when I take the bar and force it, or the cutter, I should say, and force it through, I want to have something to resist the pressure of me trying to push that bearing in deeper into the case. I know it's probably not going to move now between all of the Loctite and the threaded pin and all that stuff. I'm just stupid, so I just want to have extra insurance. So that's why we have the bushing set in there the way we do. So let's put a slot in that thing. Oh, one more thing. Don't ever hit these with a hammer either. Don't do it. Having another look, I think that turned out pretty well. Really. This is what we were patterning it off of. So there's the, the factory original with all the, the different reliefs and everything cut in the inside. And yeah, I think I think that's a pretty close stand-in. I, I, I think that's gonna work, honestly. Yeah. And we've got our updated threaded retaining dowels in so I don't know if you can call them dowels anymore but yeah it's my opinion that if cat would have went away from just that straight friction fit dowel and went with a threaded option similar to that I really believe that we would not have seen the spun front main bearing problem that happens with these so I'm liking it it looks clean it doesn't really look out of place and it should perform better than the factory originals so all right that concludes how to talk for 30 minutes and still not put anything together, <laughs> right? So, um, yeah, I went super heavy on the details with this one, but I wanted to show exactly 
what I was doing and explain and, and, and demonstrate what I had in mind for this. And I think I accomplished that. So yeah, I'm going to have to call it for this episode. My rural internet's already yelling at me. Um, this is probably going to be another long one, but it's all right. We'll make it. So thanks again, everyone. And as always, till next time.